And welcome to the stlsportspage.com's continuing spring training coverage. We get a chance now to talk it over with the voice of the Cardinals, John Rooney. How many spring trainings for you, sir? Oh, my goodness. I lost count. Uh, what did I have with the White Sox? I had 18 with them. This is my ninth with the Cardinals and one with Minnesota. So no, you're going to make me do the math, man, that yeah, I love? Exactly. <laughs> 28. <laughs> I think that's about right. It's close enough there. So, it, you know, and I, and I know people kind of get a mythical impression of spring training, and when you have bad games on the field, it, it is tough. But it's it is a perfect time of year. I mean, the weather's nice, the sun's out, and the skies are blue, and hope is eternal for every team. It is, and they're trying to get at bats in. They're trying to get innings in for the pitchers, and and trying to find enough innings for the pitchers in a shorter spring with all the good arms they have in camp. That's a, a real task for. Uh, Mike Matheny for Derek Lilliquist and all that. But it's it's great when you come down here with the terrific weather, get out of the cold that we've had. And even though as we speak, the weather in St. Louis was 70 degrees, uh, it's still a chance to uh, get to a relaxed atmosphere for the veteran players. It can be in a little bit of an uptight time for the young players who are trying to make an impression and, and find out where they're going for their minor league season. But it, it's one of the best times of the year. This and the All-Star game, I think uh, the players seem to be more relaxed than ever. And it does make a difference, of course, when a team is not expected to contend, you know, a rebuilding club, a young club. But when you look at this club, the St. Louis Cardinals specifically, a team that won 97 games a year ago, got to Game 6 of the World Series, there are a lot of people who think this is a better team now than it was a year ago. I think it is from an off offensive standpoint, but are the pitchers going to be able to repeat what they did last year, especially the young pitchers and who's going to have the sophomore jinx? Uh, I, I buy into that a little bit, but I, I think these guys are so well-conditioned and, and they go about their business. They're so well-prepared that uh, they're not sophomores. They're pitching more like seniors for some of these young guys. It's amazing what they were able to do. And, and I know that uh, Clint Hurdle was manager of the year last year, but he didn't have 21 or two rookies come up, make their debuts, and uh, end up winning 97 games, tying the Boston Red Sox for the best record. Uh, Mike Matheny, his staff, uh, the big egos aren't there. They're all about preparing the players. They're all about getting them in the right uh, frame of mind day in and day out where they feel comfortable enough to compete. And I think they'll contend this year, the next year, the year after that, because they're, they're drafting well, they're making good deals, and they seem to be signing people they want to sign. And the, the most recent, of course, the uh, Cuban shortstop, Alinamus uh, Diaz, I believe is how you pronounce his first name. We'll learn that over time. But uh, it made a positive impression on the uh, on the people as they saw today. I mean, yeah, he's not going to be able to play in games until he gets his work visa ironed out. But they're going to get enough to see him, enough of a look of him before the games, and then he will be able to get in some games on the minor league field. And if he gets uh, to Double A on up to Memphis, and and there there's plenty of time this year, Rob where we had how many players come up last year and make an impact. Uh, there's plenty of time through 185 or 90 days in a 162-game schedule that uh, if he's good, he's hitting, and, and he's in a rhythm. Uh, after all, Martinez wasn't here until we broke camp last year because of his visa problems, yet that worked out well at the end of the year with the way he was able to pitch out of the bullpen and really make a solid contribution. So uh, I think that uh, guys like Jason Mott coming back from surgery, certainly Diaz coming over, signing, and he hadn't played uh, baseball in about a year and a half or so at a competitive level, but uh, he'll get back in the swing of things. He's a natural hitter. He's a ball player, and he's young enough that uh, it won't take him very long. Visiting with the voice of the Cardinals, John Rooney, here on the SGLSportsPage.com's video cast from Jupiter, Florida, the Green Picnic Table. That was a great reset. Yeah, you did you. that really well. Thank you. I've learned a little bit. <laughs> hey, but if you Not a bad for a Jayhawk. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to a Tiger. I mean, I don't know what happened. But anyway, the... Uh, the, the, that's not the I've got my, off my game here. If you had to pick one guy to kind of be a breakout guy or be a guy that we could kind of call a, a dark horse candidate to, to be a key performer on this club, who would it be? Mm. That's, a, that's a really good question because there aren't many spots to, to open up. Uh, I'd say Matt Adams, staying healthy and being able to play in 130-some ball games where he might be able to hit 25 home runs or maybe close to 30 drive in 80 to 100 runs, uh, that, that would be what I would expect from Matt Adams if he can keep that elbow in, in check and uh, he can stay on the field where he's available to go. And what a bat off the bench when he's not in the starting lineup. He'd be my guy because we're going to have people uh, set. We don't know about Colton Wong at second base, but you know Mark Ellis can play there on an everyday basis. Daniel Descalzo 
Pete Cosma, our, our capable infielders, Johnny Peralta at shortstop, Carpenter at third base. He can play first, second, third, outfield spots. The versatility on this team, it locks up a lot of positions where there won't be guys like Piscotti. If he had a, a spring where he got to hit every time up, uh, you're not going to uh, knock off uh, a Borges or a Jay. Uh, Shane Robinson's going to have something to say about that, uh, along with Holiday and, and Craig and some others. So uh, I think it'd be Matt Adams. What about Peralta? Now, you mentioned all the years that you saw the American League Baseball, and you've seen him maybe more than a lot of the guys in St. Louis. So what what would you give Cardinal fans a little bit of a scouting report on, on what to expect from Johnny Peralta? Well, he, first thing, he's a, he's a really good guy. And anybody I, I've known from Cleveland who had a chance to interact with him uh, from a fan standpoint or from a media standpoint really enjoyed the time they had around Johnny Peralta. And he's going to fit in with this clubhouse very well. That's a, a good start. He can hit and hit for power. And if you hit the ball to him, you're out. That's the one thing I liked about him. And he does have some range, but uh, he's he's not going to be Luis Aparicio at shortstop or, or Ozzie Smith or anything like that. But I like, want those guys are old anyway. Yeah, uh, they, they can still pick it, though, I'm, uh, I'm sure. I know Ozzie can. And I think they're going to be all right uh, shortstop with Johnny Peralta because he's going to give them some punch in the offense that they didn't have. Uh, after all, six, seven, eight, nine in the World Series didn't drive anything in last year. Uh, that's a different story. When you have Peter Borges who can get on and set the table or bat down in the lineup, you have John Jay who's available. I think this is going to bring out the best in John Jay. As I said, Matt Adams, you might see a real breakout from John Jay where start to finish, he'll be out there uh, giving it everything he has, and he could have a very big year too. So uh, I just like the way it's all set up where this team can compete, and they have a chance to win every day, Rob. Starts March 31st in Cincinnati, three weeks away, and it, uh, then we'll be uh, going at it you know, fast and heavy all the way up until hopefully the end of October. It's an everyday thing, really, when we get down here to spring training, Rob, and uh, that's a great thing about baseball because you can follow it, uh, you can read about it, you can watch all the video, you can watch the games, take them in, talk about them the year-round. That's what we do around Cardinal Nation. And uh, I know some people, oh, I'm tired of hearing about Cardinal Nation. Well, folks, I've never seen anything like Cardinal Nation, and it's fun to be a part of it. John, we appreciate it. Thank you. Any time for you, Rob. You know that, even though you're a Jayhawk. John Rooney, the voice of the Cardinals, here on the STLSportsBase.com, our continuing coverage of Spring Training. This is Rob Stenopad.